At only six years old, Jean Vene Ramsey seemed to have it all. Winner of multiple national child beauty pageants, Jean Vene was crowned in the Little Miss Colorado, American Royal Miss, and National Tiny Miss Beauty. She was beautiful, popular, and talented. But the future of Jean Vene and her family saw for her was not the same future that awaited for her. John Bonnet was found murdered on December the 26th, 1996, in her Boulder, Colorado home. To this day, the case remains unsolved. So, what happened to America's beauty queen? December the 25th, 1996, was supposed to be a joyous day for the family. The Ramses, John, Patsy, Jean Bonnet and her brother Burke, all attended a Christmas party together at a family friend's home. They arrived home later that night, putting John Bonnet to bed around 10pm, according to her mother Patsy. At around 5.30am the next morning, Patsy woke up to a startling discovery. At the top of her staircase, outside the master bedroom, was a handwritten note. It stated that John Bonnet was being held hostage for a ransom of $118,000. This note will go on to become one of the most puzzling pieces of evidence in the case and quite possibly in all of American crime history. The note was unusual for many reasons. The demand was for the exact amount of John's holiday bonus he received that year. Investigators also realised the note was written with stationery found in the Ramsey's home. It was unusually long, contained erratic language and use of punctuation, and there were no fingerprints or markings found. Even though the note clearly stated not to call the police, Patsy dialed 911 at 5.52 a.m. Police arrived at the scene soon after, launching a search party to find John Bonnet. At this time, not only did investigators and various forensic teams flood the Ramsey's home, but neighbours and friends and family members did as well. Believing that John Bonnet was kidnapped from her bedroom, detectives did not secure the rest of the Ramsey home as a proper crime scene, allowing for potential contamination and destruction of evidence. While police scoured through the property for clues, John Ramsey made arrangements to deliver the ransom money. However, when the deadline of 10 a.m. passed, there was no phone call, no attempt from the kidnappers to connect with the Ramseys, and certainly no sign of John Bonnet. At around 1 p.m., John Ramsey was instructed by a detective to aid in the search. He headed downstairs to the basement, where John himself made the gruesome discovery. John Bunny's body was found in the Ramsey's wine cellar. The sweet, innocent child of only six years old was found dead. A distraught John Ramsey ripped the duct tape off his daughter's mouth and carried her body upstairs to the family's living room. Her death was ruled a homicide. And what was to come in this heartbreaking investigation shocked the entire country. Detectives were utterly baffled as to who killed John Bonnet, and furthermore, why? No ransom was ever collected, so who was behind the terrible murder? The prime suspects quickly became the two most unexpected people, her mother Patsy and father John. John and Patsy famously gave a CNN interview just weeks after her murder maintaining their innocence and pleading with the public to find the daughter's killer. But to investigators, something didn't add up. 
Starting with John Bonnet's autopsy results, they revealed that she was killed by strangulation and a skull fracture. Results also revealed John Bonnet had eaten pineapple before she was murdered. An insignificant detail at first glance, those results don't add up to the Ramsey side of the story. They claimed she went to bed when she arrived home, but test results indicated otherwise. As do the fingerprints that were found in the bowl of pineapple in the Ramsey's home. They belonged to Burke, John Bonnet's older brother. Was her death a result of something more sinister that happened inside the home? A grand jury seemed to think so. The Ramseys were indicted in 1999 for placing a child at risk and for obstructing a murder investigation. But the district attorney did not prosecute them, bringing the investigation back to square one. If the Ramseys weren't behind John Bonnet's murder, then who was? One theory is that an intruder did break into the home to abduct the little girl. In fact, a boot print and fingerprint were both found at the scene, but were later cleared to be that of the family member. Still, it was possible for an intruder to have broken into the home undetected. Boulder, Colorado was a trusted city where residents left doors unlocked and windows open. Rumours started to spread nationwide about who committed the murder. Bill McReynolds, the town Santa Claus, was reportedly questioned by police. But nothing definitive linked him or any other potential suspects to the case. Police did have one last piece of evidence locked away though. DNA was extracted from John Bunny's underwear, which concluded to be that of the un unidentified male. The sample was submitted to the FBI database, but did not reveal a hit. It did, however, rule out her parents, at least to the police. On August 15, 2006, police thought there was a light at the end of the tunnel after all. When they received a confession from John Mark Carr, a 41-year-old teacher, who confessed to drugging, sexually assaulting and murdering John Bonnet. Sadly, investigators realised this was nothing more than a hoax, and he was unable to provide any additional details about her murder, and failed the DNA test matched with the sample found in John Bonnet's body. The Ramseys, the police department and the country were broken at the false confession. In the years since her murder, several books have been written regarding the mystery. Documentaries have been filmed. And new segments of Ed obsessing over the two-decade-old question, who killed John Bonnet Ramsey? To date, Patsy Ramsey has since passed away from a long battle with cancer. While John Ramsey and Burke reside in Atlanta, where they moved shortly after John Bonnet's death. Although the country is no closer to finding the culprit behind her murder, her legacy as a charming and talented young girl will continue to live on.